This call is now being recorded. Yes, very good morning, everyone. In the last few classes, we have been discussing about the microwave uh, tubes uh, and their applications in radar, radar military systems. Now, today we shall see the concepts related to transmission line, which again uh, is part of the larger microwave system and we will uh, discuss what are the uh, important parameters associated with the transmission line and how to quantify the uh, behavior of a particular transmission line uh, or how to quantify the uh, quality of a particular transmission line using these parameters okay so these are the contents that we, uh, we have in this particular uh, module part two so we'll discuss microwave frequencies devices systems then we will uh, dwell deep into transmission line equations uh, reflection coefficient standing wave uh, and uh, stub matching smith start etc so when we talk about electromagnetic spectrum as i've been telling you uh, our focus is on microwave frequencies that is frequencies are in the range of 10 power 8 to 10 power 12 uh, hertz and these uh, frequencies are uh, particularly useful for uh, long range communication because they acquire less power and they, uh, they have a larger bandwidth and they have less fading effect and are more reliable right and these are the, right these are some of the applications of microwave and when we talk about the uh, frequency designated for these uh, microwave frequency bands these are the uh, microwave frequency bands, uh, IEEE designated things. These are now updated, but in most of the literature, the uh, designation is still uh, the designation used is still the older version. So this is the IEEE microwave frequency bands. In our lab, if you could recall uh, the uh, antenna experiment, we had explained by considering. S band frequency that is uh, frequency in the range of 2 to 4 gigahertz and the micro wave test bench or the reflex klystron that we have in the lab is uh, in the range of 8 to 12 gigahertz that is it operates at X band frequency okay so these are the uh, abbreviations of frequencies and uh, their frequency ranges and broadly, if I talk about radio uh, frequencies, it ranges from 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz, right? So these are the frequencies that can be used for communication purpose. So please note down this point. This is very important because in the future, if somebody asks you, uh, what is the radio frequency range, the general radio frequency range, it is from 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz. This is the broader radio frequency uh, range used for radio communication or wireless communication okay in general inside this we have uh, low frequency medium frequency high frequency ultra high frequency micro frequency etc but when i say frequencies used for radio communication it is from 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz okay and these are part of the larger electromagnetic spectrum okay so as the uh, frequency increases, the, uh, uh, the uh, heat associated with the uh, frequency also increases and uh, the wavelength decreases. Uh, and these are some of the applications. With respect to heat, you probably would have uh, uh, experienced this. If you talk uh, over a phone for... Uh, uh, say 20 minutes or 30 minutes in your 4G mobile. If you keep your 4G mobile uh, near to your ear and talk for 30 minutes, you will uh, see uh, elevated uh, temperature around your, your ear. If you compare that with the uh, 2G and talk uh, over phone for uh, 30 minutes using 2G phone, there will be uh, elevated temperature across your ear, but the temperature will be significantly less as compared to 4G because 4G basically will be transmitting more power. And these are some of the applications uh, for these frequencies, so ground wave, sky wave propagation, space wave propagation, etc. 
right and uh, these are the frequency bands that i told you about if my operating frequency is in the range of 1 to 2 gigahertz i'll label that as l if it is 2 to 4 i'll label that as s etc right so basically short wave long wave etc so l is the range from 1 to 2 gigahertz with the uh, wavelength ranging from 15 cm to 30 and these were used in the uh, 2g mobile phones okay so then s band uh ranges from 2 to 4 gigahertz used for uh, navigation uh, beacons uh, wireless networks etc and like this we have uh, c band x band etc each catering for a uh, particular application okay so ku band k band etc particularly where, when uh, space missions uh, take place uh, be it our isro or nasa they use x band or ku band or k band for their uh, communication inter planetary communications they use uh, either x band or ku band or k band if you just uh, look at some of the satellites communication range it will be in this range either x band ku band or k band in general right and these are the applications that i talked about so as we increase our uh, frequency obviously what will happen through put increases antenna size becomes smaller spectrum bandwidth becomes larger susceptibility to uh, rain fading also increases so we should be mindful of uh, using high frequency communication in these uh, rainy areas and this is what i told you about the old uh, frequency labels and the new frequency labels this is there in your prescribed textbook okay but in most of the literature uh, we still use older uh, frequency band labels but the updated one is this so instead of calling l people are now calling it as d when i say people the the standard uh, institutions uh, who are in charge of uh, labeling these frequency bands so they have relabeled s as e and f between 2 to 4 gigahertz but as i've already told you the literature uh, available still uses the older Uh, labels okay and as we have were discussed extensively in the last few classes the three biggest limitations of the conventional electronic tubes are the inter uh, electrode capacitance lead inductance and transit time because of this we cannot operate at high frequency and thus we go for microwave frequencies microwave tubes rather right and one uh, system that uses uh, microwave tube is referred to as a microwave uh, transmission system so here you have you'll have a microwave source this will feed microwave power when i say microwave uh, uh, source basically i am referring to a microwave tube right so this microwave tube is your reflex klystron tube that we discussed about so this is the source that will generate uh, microwave frequencies then uh, wave meter can be used for measuring the the wavelength or the frequency and then attenuator attenuates uh, to the level adjusted so that we can control the frequency or the power transmitted by this particular uh, uh, tube and then using either horn antenna or parabolic reflector antenna we will be radiating this wirelessly on the other side we will have uh, the same type receiving antenna which will convert the electromagnetic waves back to electrical signal and then we can visualize the same using the power meter we will visualize the received power we will also be visualizing the uh, square law output of this uh, receiving antenna in fact you will be doing this experiment in your lab by using micro test bench you will be either using horn antenna or parabolic reflector antenna for either transmission uh, uh, for transmission and reception of the signals wirelessly and you will compute the efficiency of the received signal or the gain of the received signal okay so that's about microwave systems and this is important with respect to your exam basically you have to write the diagram and explain the working of each block briefly and here these are the wave guides where in the signals travel from unguided mode to uh, sorry guided mode to unguided mode right uh, when i say unguided i am talking about free space or air wherein the signals are uh, radiating in the free space or air right so moving on to the next very 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 important 
concept that is voltage standing wave ratio and its uh, expressions and how it is uh, significant in the context of transmission lines to understand uh, the voltage wave standing ratio let me consider an example and then we will revisit uh, these slides okay voltage standing wave ratio so please pay attention and all of you listen carefully whenever <coughs> i want to whenever i want to transmit assume that i want to transmit some signal from source to a far away load from uh, far away load uh, located elsewhere this is the load and this is the source my expectation would be whatever i transmit at my source should be received across my load this is my expectation isn't it so this this is the load and this is the source okay so my expectation is whatever i feed at my input the same thing i should receive across my output this is my expectation irrespective of how long the uh, uh, line is this is a simple line or a transmission line you can consider this as a simple line in reality it is a transmission line okay now assume that i am transmitting 10 volt peak to peak signal from my source in i under ideal circumstances what should be my output voltage can someone comment in the chat box under ideal circumstances what is the voltage that i should expect across my load very simple question it is 10 volts peak to peak under ideal circumstances the right ideal case this is what i expect okay but in reality that will not happen we will have loss of uh, signal we will see how it is uh, lost right now if i want to quantify the quality of this particular transmission line i can use the parameter called vswr right now i am using a very very simple simple uh, equation of vswr just for uh, helping you understand the concept of vswr this is not the actual formula of vswr now if i want to quantify vswr i can use say this simple conceptual formula not the actual formula and i can call vswr as ratio of vi by v not now what was my input voltage my input voltage was 10 my output voltage was also 10 so what will be the value of vswr what will be the value of vswr it will be 1 output is 10 input is also 10 okay now this is under ideal case okay now assume practical case in the practical case what are we going to experience right in the practical scenario if this is my source right in the practical scenario generally when i talk about microwave my input frequency will be a relatively high frequency in the range of few gigahertz because of high frequency greater than few 1 gigahertz because of high frequency my transmission line will not be a simple wire instead there will be inductance created there will be resistance created in the path like this before i see my load and capacitance also will be created across two wires like this this is c c l r r and l right now why does these components come into picture i have already discussed this in the case of uh, conventional electronic tubes these components are these parasitics 
parasitics <coughs> if you could recall you would have used this term parasitics in your vlsi design so these parasitics come into picture because of uh, the high frequency operation and these parasitics are inevitable they will be there in the transmission line now because of the presence of this transmission line there will be impact on the transmitted signal so if my voltage was say 10 volts peak to peak and as i've already told you the conceptual vswr equation that i've considered is vswr is equal to vi by v out now because of the presence of these parasitics my output that i'm going to receive here is say only pi volt now tell me what is the vswr value that i'm going to get what is the value of vswr it is 10 by 5 that will be equal to 2 right so this vswr if it is greater than 1 it indicates that the transmission line is incurring losses and we have to do something to overcome uh, these losses okay now what is the solution to this problem the solution to this problem is to categorize the behavior or compensate the behavior of these parasitics into a impedance called characteristic impedance given by z naught given by z naught i'll characterize this as z naught and this will be z l so when i characterize the uh, characterize this as z naught and my load impedance as z l and if i maintain both to be equal then i can expect maximum power transfer therefore what i'll do is i will use this is the transmission line and here this transmission line value is 50 ohm that characteristic impedance and then here my load impedance is also 50 ohm therefore when this happens when this happens my vswr will be equal to if i send 10 volts here i'll be receiving 10 volts vi by v not again i'm repeating this is not the actual formula this is the formula that i'm considering just to help you understand the concept so my vi by v out will be equal to one okay now if my characteristic impedance is say 25 instead of instead of 50 what will happen what will happen there will be some forward wave there will be some forward wave and because of the mismatch in the characteristic impedance of the line and the load impedance what are we going to encounter we are going to encounter some amount of reflection that is vr right so depending on the amount of reflection my vswr value will will increase okay ideally it should be one okay so that's about that's about vswr under ideal circumstances this is what we expect uh, our transmission line behavior to be however there will be parasitics to compensate for these parasitics we have something called characteristic impedance when characteristic impedance is equal to load impedance we will have maximum power transfer okay so with that this in mind let us come to the concept of vswr and its equations so whenever we want to transmit some signal or power from point a to point b through uh, from source to load we will use a communication medium or a channel for transmission of radio frequency power and these communication channels can be either a coaxial cable or uh, a two wire cable or a waveguide or a strip line like this okay and each of these transmission uh, lines will have characteristic impedance its own characteristic impedance and this is the characteristic impedance of the coaxial cable z naught right now when I want to receive maximum power across my load. <coughs> what is the condition that I should maintain for maximum power transferred to the load? The load impedance, the load impedance should match with the characteristic impedance. When load impedance matches with the characteristic impedance, we will have maximum power absorption by the load. Similarly, when the source impedance is equal to the characteristic impedance 
when the source impedance is equal to the characteristic impedance, we'll have maximum power transfer from the feeder. This is the feeder to the source. This is the communication channel or the source, right? So when this is equal to this, we will have maximum feeding. And when this is equal to this, we'll have maximum absorption, okay? So when I have 50, assuming that this part is matched, assuming that my characteristic impedance of the line is equal to the load impedance, we will have maximum power transfer, right? However, if load impedance is not equal to 50, not all the power is transmitted to the load or absorbed by the load. Therefore, some power is uh, absorbed and some power is reflected. So we will have forward power and reflected power, okay? Now this point is important. All of you please pay attention and listen carefully. This is the ideal case scenario when my impedances are matched, when my load impedance is perfectly matched, I'll have maximum power transfer, right? So from feeder to load when all impedances are equal. And this is the voltage moving from the feeder to the load. So it will move from left to right like this. So it is moving and it is absorbed by the load. This is the ideal case scenario. Now something very interesting happens when my output is shorted. When my output is shorted, what will be the voltage and what will be the current? Ideally, ideally, if I have a short circuit, what should be the voltage? What is the voltage across the short circuit? It is zero, but there will be current flow because we will have closed loop. So if my uh, impedance is less or if it is almost equal to zero, then the voltage across the load will be zero, but there will be current movement. And thus this leads to three types of waves. First is the forward wave VF. Then we will have reflection that is VR. Then we will have, then we will have another wave, which is the summation of VF and VR, which is referred to as standing wave. All of you, please, please pay attention and listen carefully. This standing wave is the summation of the reflected wave and refle and forward wave. The reason why it is called standing wave is because it is stagnant. It looks as if it is standing in front of your oscilloscope and it is a summation of your reflected wave and forward wave. Ideally, there should not be any standing wave. Ideally, you should have a movement from left to right like this. But practically, because of either short circuit or open circuit, you will have some forward wave and uh, reflected wave. And the summation of these two is referred to as standing wave. Thus, we will have three waves, forward wave, reflected wave and voltage summation or the standing wave. Now, this is with respect to short circuit. The same thing would happen for open circuit. Now, in the open circuit, can someone tell me what is current equal to? What will be the value of current? I is equal to? In open circuit, what is I? What is the value of I in open circuit? It is 0, but we will have voltage. So again, we will have some forward wave, some reflected wave, and some standing wave. This is the forward wave, this is the reflected wave, and this is the standing wave, right? And these quantities has to be, these uh, uh, waves should be quantified to understand the quality or the efficiency of the output received, okay? So thus, VSWR comes into picture, and VSWR, one of the standard equations is the ratio of V max by V min. Now, what is this V max and V min? As I've already told you, you have a standing wave, which is the summation of reflected wave and forward wave. This wave, that is the standing wave, which is the summation of reflected wave and forward wave will have a maximum amplitude that is referred to as V max and the minimum amplitude associated with this resultant wave is referred to as V min and the ratio of these two will give us VSWR and this is the actual definition, one of the actual definitions, right? Ideally, what should be the VSWR value? It should be one, but 
practically if it is open uh, circuit we will have infinity if it is short circuit uh, open short circuit we will have uh, infinity but ideally one is what is expected okay and some practical example are 3 is to 1 2 is to 1 etc okay now the whatever i told you here the same is shown in this figure this uh, is the uh, forward wave and this is the reverse wave and this is the resultant wave or the standing wave here here the maximum amplitude of the standing wave is v max is equal to 3 similarly the minimum amplitude of the standing wave is 1 therefore what will be the value of vswr I just told you in this slide, VSWR is V max by V min, V max by V min, that is V max by V min of the standing wave. The standing wave V max is 3 volts, the standing wave V min is 1 volt. So, what will be the VSWR value in this scenario? What will be the VSWR value in this scenario? Can someone comment in the chat box? V max is 3, V min is 1. So, isn't it obvious? It is 1. VSWR is equal to 1. Okay. So, <clears throat> we will also understand what does VSWR is equal to 3 mean in the uh, table that I have in the next few slides. So, therefore, VSWR is calculated by using V max and V min of the standing wave. Okay. So, I hope all of you are now clear with these three waves. The first wave is the forward wave, the second wave is the reflected wave and the third one is the standing wave and this standing wave is the summation of reflected wave and forward wave. Okay, And we can also compute standing wave by, by using reflection coefficient which is the ratio of reflected wave divided by forward wave. Now you can see in this diagram this is the forward wave. This is the reflected wave. You can see there will also be some phase shift with respect to forward wave and reflected wave. And reflection coefficient tells us the ratio of the reflected wave with respect to forward wave. And using reflection coefficient, we can also compute the VSWR value, okay, which is equal to 1 plus magnitude of gamma divided by 1 minus magnitude of gamma. Right? And uh, we using some uh, power meters, we can also compute VSWR by using the forward power and reflected power. Okay, So, that's about VSWR calculation using power levels. And as I told you about VSWR uh, value significance, if my VSWR value is 1, please pay attention here. If my VSWR value is 1, gamma will be equal to uh, 0, that is the reflection coefficient and the reflected power is 0. If my VSWR is 2, VSWR is 2, the amount or the percentage of reflected power is 11% and gamma will be equal to 0 0.33. And if my VSWR is equal to 10, this means that there is a loss of a reflection power of 67% and gamma is equal to 0.8. And if VSWR is 20, then 82% is the reflected power and gamma is equal to 0.9. Okay. So, V is the voltage standing wave ratio. So, it is not directly in correlation with power. So, you know that P is equal to V square R. So, therefore, if VSWR is equal to 2, there is a loss of 10.1 percentage of uh, power. Okay, and this can also be correlated with the load impedance and characteristic impedance to compute reflection coefficient and thereby the VSWR value. Okay, and here in this regard, as we have already discussed, we have two special cases. One is the case of short circuit. When output is short circuit, load impedance is equal to zero. If load impedance is equal to zero, what will happen to gamma? It will become minus one. And if I have open circuit, uh, ZL will be equal to infinity, then gamma will become 1 irrespective of whether gamma is equal to 1 or minus 1, my VSWR value will be equal to infinity. Therefore, there will be 100% reflection if my load is either short circuited or open circuited and if I have VSWR is equal to infinity, it means that I have lost all the power and that transmission line is 
of no use because it is not at all absorbing anything it is not at all delivering anything and there is 100% reflection okay and now let us uh, understand or analyze the same with the help of this video which shows us the forward wave reflected wave and the standing wave so this is the forward wave ideally in ideal scenario this is the only wave we should have but because of the mismatch in the impedance we will have this reflected wave so you can see this is the reflected wave vr which is coming out v f also is referred to as vi then this green color uh, wave is the standing wave it is referred to as standing wave or stationary wave so as vr and vf changes standing wave also changes and this is the stationary uh, image of the standing wave okay so depending on the amount of reflection you can see here reflection is 0.5 reflection is 0.5 this is the um, when there is no reflection you can see there is uh, going to be absolutely no reflected wave or standing wave you will have just the incident wave when there is no reflection you can see here reflection coefficient is zero but when there is significant reflection coefficient this is how your the waves look like when your reflection coefficient is 0.5 you will have standing wave like this okay and larger the reflection coefficient larger will be the standing wave you can see the standing wave v max is almost touching 2 volts is almost touching 2 volts so this is reflection standing wave for reflection reflection coefficient of 1 okay so any doubt in forward voltage, reverse voltage, or standing wave? I hope all of you are now clear with clear with uh, the meaning of standing wave. Standing wave is the wave which is a resultant of these two signals, forward wave and reflected wave, uh, add together to create standing wave. In ideal circumstances, I should have only one wave, that is the forward wave, which is moving from source to load because but in practical scenario because of the mismatch in the load impedance and the characteristic impedance we will have some reflection and the summation of the forward wave and reflected wave is referred to as the standing wave and this vswr tells us the amount of uh, reflection encountered in a particular transmission line and thereby it also tells us the amount of reflected power in that particular transmission line by knowing the value of vswr we will be able to predict the efficiency of that transmission line for example if vswr is 5 if vswr is 5 we can say that the efficiency of that particular transmission line is only around 56 percent okay so by using vswr we can uh, estimate the uh, reflected power or the efficiency of a particular transmission line okay so any doubt in any of the concepts that I have discussed today? Any doubt? In fact, you will be visualizing this in the experiment that you are going to do in the lab that is microwave test, by test bench which uses reflex klystron tube for producing oscillations when you will be measuring the VSWR value. Okay, You will be asked to uh, connect a matched load and then a uh, mismatched load and then you'll be asked to compute VSWR value. So this concept is also very, very important for your lab, ADC lab uh, experiment. Okay. Any doubt here? Any doubt? Any doubt in the VSWR concept that I've discussed today? Okay, if there are no doubts, let me take attendance. In the next class, we shall solve some uh, numericals uh, related to these uh, concepts, VSWR.
just a minute i'll share the attendance link uh, you can submit the attendance link and then you can exit the google meet let me share the attendance link just a minute I've shared the attendance link. All of you, please submit your attendance, uh, and then you can exit the Google Meet. And before you uh, submit your attendance, I just wanted to show you the documentation of attendance. You can see my screen, I believe now. Each and every day, we will be documenting your attendance. So please don't take it for granted. You can see the timeline. Yesterday's timeline. You have given attendance uh, around 10, 12 to 10, 15. So only 39 of you have given me the attendance. So look at the count. It is 39. So each and every day attendance is recorded. You can see the date, everything. So at the end, please don't come to me saying that you have shortage of attendance. There may be a scenario wherein uh, attendance may be taken uh, seriously so we we have been documenting each and every day's attendance so if you are uh, not serious to submit attendance then you may be in trouble uh, in the days to come so please be serious when it comes to submitting attendance and uh, submit your attendance on daily basis uh, on the platform uh, that i ask you to uh, share okay so i have shared the attendance link all of you please submit your attendance without fail and then you can exit the google meet Thank you.